Yes, there are risks to our economy right now. There are risks because we are still seeing issues with unemployment. We're still seeing risks in the housing market because housing is still unaffordable to many different people. We're still seeing risks in the employment and labor market because companies are still struggling to find work. We're still seeing risks in the supply chain market because we still have supply chain bottlenecks and companies are still struggling getting parts. Not to mention the fact that we also have risks with inflation and or potential deflation in the future because of all the money printing that's been happening. And so there's a worry about how strong our dollar is going to be in the future. All these factors pose a risk to our economy, which ultimately can affect the value of our investments because if the economy is going down, people don't have money to put in the stock market. If people don't have money to put in the stock market and people are scared about what's going on in the economy, they're gonna pull their money out of the stock market, which could cause stock prices to go down. Same with real estate. If our economy is hurting, people don't have money to go out and buy homes. People don't have money to pay the rent, which hurt real estate prices, which could cause real estate prices to go down. This is where first you have to remember that nobody, I don't care who you are, nobody can predict what's coming next. Not even Warren Buffett and not even a random guy on YouTube. Nobody knows when the next stock market crash is gonna happen, let alone how big the next stock market crash is gonna be. Same with the real estate market. Nobody knows when the next real estate crash is gonna happen, let alone how big it's gonna be. What we do know is yes, we will see another stock market crash and we will see another real estate crash. We've been seeing these things happen for a century now and they will continue to happen. This is a boom and bust cycle that is a part of our economy. Every asset class has it and we've seen it happen and we will continue to see it happen. Now what you wanna do as a financially educated investor is understand this and now make investment decisions based off of financials, not just emotions. Because a lot of people hear this and they get really emotional. They either sell their stocks or they sell their investments or they go out and buy based off of information that they might have heard and so they get really emotional and they get panicky or they get excited and then buy or sell and then this triggers people to sell before they want to or sell before they should or they buy things that they shouldn't buy because they're hoping to make a quick buck they're looking at the short term they're looking at the next three months the next six months the next 12 months and they're trying to see how can i make a quick buck and if things don't align if all the stars don't align perfectly and someone's headlines disagrees with yours then you get scared and you sell or you buy here's the thing Nobody can perfectly predict the future. Nobody thought back in 2018 that in 2020 we were gonna see this massive pandemic which is gonna shut down the economy, which is gonna cause the stock market to crash and is going to cause the real estate market to ultimately explode. And then briefly after we see the stock market crash, we're gonna see the stock market break brand new record highs. We can't predict these things, but what we can do is make educated decisions based off of what we do know and then based off of that, make an investment strategy that aligns with our goals and then put these two things together. You take your investment strategies and now you align that with everything that you know that's going on around you and now you make investment decisions based off of that. Now right now, you're not getting clouded by all the emotion in the world because right now, there is a lot of emotion, especially in the investing and the financial world and you do not want your money to be driven by emotion. You want your money to be driven by financials because when your money is driven by emotion, your money is going straight down the toilet. The first thing you gotta decide is if you wanna be an investor or a trader because an investor's job is to have your money invested for the long term. And when I say long term, I mean at the very minimum one year, but now we're talking about 10 years or 20 years or 30 years. So if you're an investor and you're thinking about investing your money for the long term and now people are talking about a potential stock market crash happening, let's just say for the sake of this example and hypothetical, there could be a potential stock market crash in one year. If there's a potential stock market crash in one year, but you're looking to invest your money for the next 30 years, well now a stock market crash in one year should not affect your long-term horizon because you're investing your money for the long-term, not for the next 12 months. This is where people say, but just breathe. If you think the stock market is gonna crash in 12 months, why should I invest my money now? I should just wait for the stock market to crash, then put all my money in there. Now I can buy all my stocks at a discounted price. Yeah, you're absolutely right. If you think the stock market is gonna crash in three months or 12 12 months, it's better for you to now not invest your money and then as soon as the stock market crashes, put your money in there and now you bought all your stocks at a discount. The only problem with that is you could be wrong. If you're right, then yeah, you might be able to buy these assets at a 25% off discount. But if you're wrong and things go up a lot, well now maybe you have to pay 25% more to buy these assets because you are trying to time the market. An investor's job is not to time the market. 
What an investor is trying to do is they're trying to find an asset that they believe is a good value or is undervalued. And now they want to buy this asset and accumulate as much of this asset as possible and then hold it for the long term because they believe in the value of this asset. They're not trying to sit here and trying to find the best price today and try to flip it in two weeks. That way they can make a quick profit. That's not what an investor does. That's more of gambling or trading. And so that's not what we're trying to do as an investor. What you're trying to do as an investor is you want to find a good investment that you believe in. If we're talking about the stock market, we're trying to find a company that you believe in, that you believe has good values for the long term. Now you want to buy this and hold it. Now, if the market does crash, something goes wrong, well now what you can do is you can come in and buy even more. If you're the person that's just sitting around waiting for a crash to happen, well now your money is just gonna be sitting there idle, collecting dust while you wait for hopefully this crash to happen, which we don't know when it will happen. And we also don't know how big it will be. This is where, again, it goes back to your strategy. What is your goal as an investor? And you can have more than one strategy. Like I have multiple different investment strategies. I have some money that's going every single week into the stock market. I have an automatic deposit where every single week some money is withdrawn from my bank account and it goes automatically into my stock market portfolio. So now these ETFs are constantly growing every single week because I have some money always being invested in there. I also have my money in a different stock market brokerage where I'm looking for deals. When I find a good company that I believe is undervalued, that I want to own, that I believe in for the long term, then I will use this money to buy that. I also have money in real estate. With real estate, I'm looking only for cash flow. What I'm looking for now is how much money do I have to invest today and then how much money am I going to make every single month from here on out? When it comes to my real estate investment portfolio, I really don't care what happens to real estate prices because I'm not buying my real estate investments based off of home prices. I'm buying my real estate investments based off of cash flow. I want to know how much money do I have to invest today and how much money am I going to make every single month? There's a difference between that and buying a property and hoping that you can sell it for twice as much in five years. That's not what I'm trying to do. I just want the cash flow with real estate. So there's different strategies and what you have to figure out is what is your strategy? What are you looking for? And based off of the strategy that you have, now you got to put your money in the market based off of what's going on around you. With my money going into the market every single week, that hasn't changed because that is a long-term purely passive strategy where now I can consistently have some money going into the market. That has not changed and that's not going to change. If the market crashes, hey, I'm going to put more money into the market, but every single week I got more money going into the market. When it comes to looking for individual market deals that I'm looking for in the stock market, all I'm doing here now is I'm being a little bit more picky. I'm not just going in and buying anything. I'm looking for deals. I am valuing companies. I'm trying to find companies that I believe in that I think will be a good investment opportunity for me. And I'm being a little bit more picky right now because I don't just want to overpay for anything.